Drader Bergdahl walks free after mental health defense. Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, the convicted army soldier whose choice to abandon his post in Afghanistan eight years ago led to the deaths of six soldiers, received an outrageous sentence Friday afternoon that included only a dishonorable discharge, a reduction in rank to private and a requirement he forfeit $1,000 in pay per month for 10 months. Not included in the sentence was time in prison, according to ABC News, and this despite days of testimony from the myriads of wounded soldiers and heartbroken widows whose lives were upended because of Bergdahl's actions. This stunning sentence comes only days after Bergdahl's attorneys argued he should be given leniency, versus the 14 years behind bars sought by prosecutors, because he suffers from mental illnesses, including schizotypal personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, as reported by CNN. The defense's witness, Dr. Charles Morgan, a forensic psychiatrist and professor at the University of New Haven and Yale University, testified as well that Bergdahl grew up in a troubled childhood. He therefore had a number of factors that pointed to stress vulnerability before enlistment, Morgan said. And apparently, this excuses his decision to desert his post in 2009, a decision that led to search parties being launched to find him. It was during these searches that Staff Sergeant Clayton Bowen, Private First Class Morris Walker, Staff Sergeant Kurt Curtis, 2nd Lieutenant Darren Andrews, Staff Sergeant Michael Murphy and Private First Class Matthew Martinick were killed, as reported by Time magazine. Other soldiers were likewise injured during the searches, including National Guard Master Sergeant Mark Allen, whose wife testified this week about how their lives changed after a sniper bullet pierced her husband's helmet. We can't even hold hands anymore unless I pry open his hand and place mine in there, she said. Essentially, instead of being his wife, I'm his caregiver. Which doesn't mean I love him any less, but it's a very different dynamic. The searches were for nothing, though, as Bergdahl wound up being captured by the Taliban and held until May 31, 2014, when he was released as part of a prisoner exchange brokered by the Obama administration. Three years later in October of 2017, he pleaded guilty to charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. And though many had hoped military judge Colonel Jeffrey Nance would lock Bergdahl up for at least the 14 years sought by prosecutors, evidently he felt otherwise. To make matters worse, some believe his decision to spare Bergdahl time in prison stemmed from his animosity toward President Donald Trump, who has repeatedly called the army sergeant a no-go traitor who deserves to be executed. T. He judge went easy on Bergdahl to go after Trump, opined New York Post columnist John Potteretz in a tweet Friday. He all but said so earlier in the week. That's wrong. He was referencing Nance's announcement that he would consider the president's criticism of Bergdahl's mitigation evidence during his sentencing hearing. It remains unclear if Potteretz's theory is true or not, though the implications are astounding. We've heard of liberal activist judges before, but never in my life did I expect one would allow a traitor like Bergdahl to run free just to spite the president, the president, 